Calling a shoe a workhorse always feels like a bit of a backhanded compliment. But when it comes to a daily trainer, a workhorse is exactly what you want. It's a shoe that's gonna put its head down, get the work done, and not make any complaints. This is the New Balance 880 version 12 and the Puma Velocity Nitro 2. And it's time to mount up. Regulators. Yo, what's going on everybody? Kofuzi here and today I'm going to talk about the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 and the New Balance 880 version 12. Now before I give you my thoughts on these two daily trainers, I do want to go over some disclosures. Both of these shoes are shoes that I bought myself. No one sent them to me or is paying me to make this video and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 and the New Balance 880 version 12. First, let's talk about why I think this is a good battle or why I picked these two shoes to put up head to head. I think they both fall into that subcategory within daily trainers of workhorses. Now, as far as daily trainers go, I feel like daily trainers need to be able to do three things really well. One, they need to be versatile enough to handle a wide variety of types of runs. The shoe also needs to be comfortable enough to reach for day after day. So you're still looking for some extra creature comforts, whether it's in the upper or preferably if it's in that midsole, just to make it a little bit more bearable to handle on a day after day basis. And because you're gonna be reaching for it so often, it's a shoe that you need to be a little bit more durable than say your racing shoes. Now, what makes a shoe of the daily trainers? What makes it a workhorse shoe? Typically, I feel like in terms of how durable the shoe is, there's a little bit of an extra emphasis placed on durability, even if it means that the shoe is a little bit less exciting to run in or maybe a little bit less comfortable to run in. There's a lot of extra rubber on the outsole of each of these shoes. And so you're definitely feeling that this is going to be a very durable shoe. It's going to last a really long time. The uppers are also pretty robust, so there's not gonna be any toes poking out of the sides of the shoes, even after you've locked several hundred miles in them. Both of these shoes definitely fit the bill there. And the other thing that workhorse shoes tend to also do is that they tend to be a little bit underrated. And I feel like both of these shoes fit not only within the daily trainer category, but within that workhorse category as well. Now, the other thing that makes me interested in comparing these two shoes head to head is that they're also both very different for this year. Now, I didn't get a chance to run in the Puma Velocity Nitro version one, but I do know that the midsole for this shoe has changed up significantly. Last year, it was mostly Puma's Nitro Foam with just a little sliver of EVA in the heel and then also a plastic clip to help aid in a little bit of ankle stability. This year, they've switched out that little sliver of EVA for a full length EVA on the lower layer of the shoe. And they've gotten rid of some of the extra plastic that was in the heel area. And what this results in is a very comfortable midsole that not only feels like it cushions impact well, but I also feel like because of that nitro foam, it feels like it's a pretty speedy foam. Now I mentioned the outsole, the outsole here has that Puma grip, very thick layer of rubber outsole. And with each step, you're definitely feeling not only that midsole, but you're feeling that kind of durability in the outsole as well, which some people don't like but I feel like some discerning runners will understand what's really going on and will still be able to appreciate the shoes nonetheless. And one thing for this year, which I think is gonna be a theme for Puma, is that they've paid a lot of attention to fit in the heel. They're really working on making sure that people feel very secure and locked into that heel. And I'm definitely feeling that in this shoe, I feel almost kind of like uh, like 360 degrees of secureness in the shoe. Not only do I feel like I'm locked in, like the shoe is hugging the back of my ankle, but I also feel like there's a lot of support under the heel as well. So it makes for a very secure fit back here 
while at the same time somehow maintaining a very low cut type of feeling. So for those of you who don't like a lot of stuff on the sides of your foot as you're running, this is definitely a shoe that I think you need to be trying. Now with the 880 version 12, there's also a lot of differences on this shoe. They changed the upper, the midsole, and the outsole as well. So it's really a complete overhaul of what this shoe was. It only vaguely resembles last year's version. And now this year, it seems like New Balance has unified all their designs so that the entire brand carries one design language, which I think works out really well and makes the whole brand feel a lot more cohesive. The 880 last year was a little bit of an outlier. Some of the previous generation of designs and this year i feel like it's much more updated uh, while still having like kind of that 880 silhouette so it's still there for all those 880 faithful and the outsole while it still looks like it has quite a bit of rubber and there is quite a bit of rubber outsole here. It doesn't have that kind of like signature rubber outsole feel, like that kind of extra density that a workhorse shoe tends to normally have. And the result for this year with the 880 version 12 is that you've got a shoe that is fantastic for just about anything. It's great for recovery runs. It's great on the long run. And it's surprisingly nimble and very fun if you've got speed work that you've got to put in as well. Uh, it really impressed me at how well it can move quickly. Now, overall, I think that there's kind of a couple ways to look at this battle in terms of which is the better workhorse daily trainer. I think if we're going to go with like the standard definition that I set out for what a workhorse daily trainer is, I think that the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 might be the champion because it still has that like feeling of density, that durability that's going to be in the outsole that somewhat muddles the experience of the midsole foam here, which I think this system is working really well. So this may be like classically the best workhorse daily trainer, but if we're still going to call the New Balance 880 version 12 a daily trainer, I think this is just a better shoe. It's better at the long run, it's better at the recovery run, and it's better at moving quickly as well. I just feel like it's a little bit more cushioned, a little bit more springy. Now, I know that's going to be a very subjective thing. Not everyone likes a super squishy, springy shoe, but I definitely do, and I'm so impressed with the 880 version 12. It's to the point where I'm thinking that it might even kind of lifting itself out of that workhorse category of daily trainers and just might be at that top level of daily trainers. Last year, my two favorite daily trainers were the Nova Blast and the Mach 4. This year, it might be the case that there are three names that I have to kind of mention in the same breath and the 880 version 12 just might be one of my favorite daily trainers of the year. So in this battle, I'm going to give the crown to the 880 version 12, whether you're looking at it as a workhorse or as just a daily trainer in general, I just think it's a much better shoe. It's going to be really tough to beat this year. So those are my thoughts on the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 versus the New Balance 880 version 12. Both are fantastic shoes to run in. If you have any questions about these shoes, please feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?